MCU Phase 4 has come to a close, so today I'm going to stop and rank all four MCU phases from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all four MCU phases. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours and let's get started. Easily coming in in last place for me is phase four. Now don't get me wrong, there still have been a bunch of things in phase four that I've thoroughly enjoyed. Spider-Man No Way Home was just an absolute gift to Spider-Man fans and a film I never expected that we would ever get in live action, and I never thought that it could possibly be as good as it turned out to be. Both of the special presentations on Disney+, Plus, I thought, were nice additions to the MCU that just opened new opportunities for what they're able to do. A number of the films I've thoroughly enjoyed. Some of the TV shows have done some very cool things, and just in general, they've been able to kind of experiment more, try new things, and in general... I like that they're trying new things and experimenting, but a lot of those experiments didn't pay off for me. A lot of the risks they took were the wrong risks. Some of the choices they made, I think, were just bad choices that you could have predicted on the front end that they wouldn't pay off very well. I think they're putting out too much content, which means the overall quality of projects being greenlit, the directors, writers being recruited, the overall quality is dropped because they're just having to recruit more of them and they have less time to give to the people that they are recruiting. They stepped out into new territory with television, which is a new set of skills that they have to figure out. I don't think they've cracked that code quite yet. And they did it while also just doubling what they were, the, their general output. So some of it didn't work. I feel like there's been a lot more misfires than there have been in the previous phases feel like they've segmented their audience where part of what worked really well in the first three phases is that all the MCU movies were essentially for the same very broad general audience. And in phase four, they started targeting very specific audiences for different TV shows in particular, but even some of the movies did that. And I don't think that's overall a good strategy if you want your universe to feel cohesive. And the thing that just really bummed me out about phase four is despite it having twice as much content as the previous phases, any of the previous phases, I think maybe all of them combined, it didn't have a clear through line that pulled it together. We did all these different things, and despite setting up so much stuff, it didn't build up to anything that paid off in the phase itself. We started the multiverse, the celestials, we got the thunderbolts in the work, we got a bunch of these individual standalone stories, but there's no through line on a story level that pulls it together. I know that it's about following up Endgame, I know that it's about grief and a bunch of these different things, I get that, but on a plot level, nothing pulled it together you don't have that big final event at the end that just kind of ties it all up in a nice bow where it comes together. No, we just have all these different major plot lines, a bunch of these standalone little stories, so it just felt unfocused. So there's great standout moments. There's cool things that were on Disney+, Plus, but as a, the, as a whole, the face just underwhelmed me and didn't feel like it ever quite came together. In third place, phase one. The phase that we didn't know was a phase as it was happening. It's book ended by, for me, two top tier MCU stories. The original Iron Man, a standalone story about this character that kicked off the whole universe and laid the foundation, cracked the code for the tone. And then the original Avengers, which cracked the code on how to do these team up movies where you combine all these different characters from all these different genres into a single unified property. And they pulled it off essentially through Iron Man and the Avengers. That was the groundwork for the MCU as a whole, as we know it. The four properties between these two bookends kind of have varying quality. We got some low tier stuff. We got a lot of mid tier stuff in there, but um, not, it was very clearly they were figuring things out. A lot of awkward moments in there trying to figure out how to have grounded, but space stuff at the same time. Doesn't all work entirely. Likewise, they're trying to figure out how to build to an Avengers movie without being too heavy handed. And they went way too heavy handed with Iron Man 2, where it's basically an Avengers setup movie. Now, as I've criticized phase four for not having a through line and a focus, I've had some people tell me like, well, phase one didn't have a focus. It was just a bunch of standalone stories, which 
what? <laughs> Phase one has a very clear focus that is clearly stated in Iron Man. Nick Fury walks out and tells us we're going towards the Avengers. And then each movie sets up a new character. As I just mentioned, Iron Man 2 is criticized for being too much of an Avengers setup movie. Captain America has first Avenger in the title. So like, I like that it was like, it's a, it's a very clear, simple focus because it's let's build the team and then let's pay it off with the Avengers. So it's a very focused phase that was building towards something and it paid off so well. The journey to get there, a little bit uneven at times as they were trying to figure out how to do a lot of different things and what is the right vibe for everything. And it's the phase that was created before the Disney acquisitions, which just has a bit of a different flavor to it. Our runner up phase two and phase one and two are right there parallel with me. And when it comes to the phases, phase one is the introductory phase building towards the Avengers. Phase three is the ultimate culmination, the battle against Thanos. And this is like the bridge phase in the middle where they expand the world, explain the Affinity Stones and kind of take all of our characters to that next level. So you take Steve Rogers, who's someone from... World War II era where it's really clear, good guys, bad guys, and you put them in a world that's much more complicated where you can't trust the government and there's conspiracies. We go into space and they take their biggest risk yet with the Guardians of the Galaxy and they show how they can even put these cosmic stories in the mix that are really funny but also very heartfelt. Kind of did a lot of new and different things in this phase, all while exploring our characters on a deeper level. Now that we've kind of done laid the foundation at the beginning, now we're building on it in phase two. While it certainly has its own issues, Thor the Dark World, Mandarin Twist, and Iron Man 3. It's also, in a lot of ways, a more mature phase because of where they're moving our characters to, what they're having to go through. But easily coming in at first is phase three. And this was really kind of a special moment in cinematic history where you just had this studio that was firing on all cylinders where they were putting out mainstream entertainment that was very broadly accessible, but also being widely accepted by critics and praised by critics at the exact same time. It kicks off with Civil War, where you break up the Avengers and actually get Spider-Man in the MCU. You get a movie like Thor Ragnarok that leans so far into comedy, but still kind of worked. It still clicked for most people. Then right after that, you get Black Panther, which is nominated for Best Picture. And then, of course, you just get all these great team-up movies where Civil War once again. Then you get Thor Ragnarok once again, also a team-up movie. Of course, Infinity War and Endgame, where they built to the culmination of all of these different phases, 20 movies worth of storytelling and they pulled it off. They actually were as good as we hoped that they would be. Once again, just a dream come true for comic book, comic book movie fans that just had so much fan service, but earned fan service, not just cheap cameos, stuff that made sense in the story. So you felt it and it came to such a satisfying conclusion by the time you got to the end of this phase, that a lot of people went, all right, I think I could be done with the MCU now. That was such a satisfying conclusion. I think I'm done. And here we are a phase later. There's still people kind of saying that of like, ah, for me, the MCU ended with phase three. And I get it because they really did such a great job of building to a climax, paying it off in a way that was so good. And that's what's just is so great about this phase. It's entertaining. People loved it. It was praised and it was all this storytelling that actually merged together in a way that worked. And they ended up doing something that has never been done before in cinematic history. And I don't know if it will ever be done on this level with this amount of praise ever again. This really was something special that we got to be a part of watching it as it happened. And for me personally, this YouTube channel was grown riding the wave of phase three, where I started between Civil War and Doctor Strange. And then I went full time 
hopping on the wave of Endgame, so I will forever be grateful for Phase 3 for allowing me to do what I do, leading to this moment right now where I am talking to you wherever you are at on this world. So thank you, Kevin Feige, for giving us Phase 3, which led to me having this career. Very cool. I appreciate it. Thus, Phase 3 comes in at number one. If you enjoyed this video, I've done a ton of other MCU content. You can check it all out right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.